All right, this is going to be a quick uh, MongoDB tip on kind of writing out some queries. Uh, we're going to try and accomplish one goal. We're going to do it a few different ways, and maybe we'll learn something along the way. So uh, what we're looking at here is like a little weekend project a couple of us worked on called Sprout. It's just a, it's like a plant lookup thing. So if there's herbs or vegetables that you want to know if you can plant in your area, the United States only right now, um, in what month it currently is, then that's what the goal of this is going to tell you. So that's what we built over here. So here's an example of uh, here. So here's Maryland and wintertime. So these are some things that I can plant here right now. So we've got all this data in a Mongo database, and we want to write a query that actually does this. Given a state, how do we look up the plants? So let's look at the database and figure out how we're going to do this. Now, we're going to look up the database using a tool called RoboMongo. It's the best tool on Mac that I've found to kind of visualize the data um, and kind of, you know, test queries and interact with it. So what we've got is a climate database that has country, state, and then zones. Okay, and the zones, if we look at them, are keyed by, or they're an array of all the different um, zones. Now, if you're asking yourself what is a zone, a zone is a it's called a plant hardiness zone given by the US government. Um, let's see if I can find the map real quick. Plant hardiness zones map. So this is the zones map and basically it gives you a zone based on your climate where you are in the country. Okay? And that is that determines what you can plant in your area. So what we've done with our data, we've imported all that. So for Alabama, there are four zones in Alabama. Okay, so there's plants per zone. So he, so in this collection, we've got states and zones that that state has. And then our plant collection, we've got all of the plants with images, and they've got a list of zones too, and their zones are by zone number, and then these are the number of, and these are the months for that zone. Okay, so we're looking at, for onions, if you have zone 2B, you're good in February, March, April, and May. That's what the data means. So it's got a list of all the different zones, and for each zone we know what month it is. So we're, writing, we're going to write a query about this. So to find, um, we're just going to write these queries up here. So the first thing we want to find is, I'm going to write this out kind of the long way. So first I want to get all of plants that have images only. So to write that, we're going to pass an object into find, and we're going to say image is the key, and we're going to say exists. So you can't just write exists like this. You have to actually pass it an object exists true. That's the this is the little flag for saying I want something to exist. So if I command enter to run that you can see I only have results now that actually have images that exist. Okay? And conversely in MySQL you would have to do not null or not blank. Right? But here you can just do it exists where the key exists at all. Now we're going to leave that, so we're going to add another condition. So this is one condition, we're going to comma, and now we're going to add another condition. Now this condition, we want to get, let's just start off by saying, I want everything that's got zone, let's say, 6B. And actually, before we, write, before we finish this, let's, let's just quickly go back and figure out what zones we're going to be looking for in terms of where I am, which is Maryland. So let's go back, let's go over to climate, and then let's look up Maryland. So to look up Maryland, we're going to pass it an object, and we're going to say where state is Maryland, MD, okay? And just hit enter. So we're given this that has two zones, okay? So we can either view this document, or we can actually um, append right to this and say dot zones, and just let it, um, let it not give me the answer. Awesome. So let's view document, and here we see that we have an array of zones. So we're going to look for 6B and 7A zones. So let's go back over here. So we want 6A and what was it? Tell me, tell me what it was. 6B and 7A. So 6B and 7A. Let's start with 6B. Now in Mongo, what we want to check is to see if 6B has a month, right? So we don't want to just check to see if 6B exists. We want to check if 6B has a month number we're looking for. And it's December right now, so we're going to look for month number 12. Okay? So to do that, we're actually going to pass in a key. So we're going to say, and I'm going to write this first, zones dot, right, because we're traversing in, zones dot 6b. We want that to have um, 12. 
okay? And if we run that, this is going to give us all of the plants that have zone 6B set to 12, or that has zone 6B contains 12, okay? A more explicit way of writing this would be in the array 12, okay? This is a more explicit way of saying, like, I want 6B, which is an array, to contain the 12 number, okay? That's the explicit way of writing this. As you just saw, though, we don't actually need to do all this. We can just say equals 12. Totally fine. Now, let's talk about the zone 6B thing for a second. Obviously, zones is the key. But when you're actually looking for things in Mongo, you can use the dot operator to search within that. So in this case, we're saying 6B inside of zones. I want it to have 12. Okay, and it knows that zo that's zones that 6B is an array, and it's going to look for 12 inside of that array. These are things that Mongo is going to assume for us, which is perfect for this case. Now, we also want to see that uh, 7A uh, also. So if we go ahead and do that, zones.7A, also 12, we get no results, because I wrote 7A wrong. We still get no results. And that's because our, we just added a condition. So if we read this out loud, we're saying, I want to find plants that have an image, that have a zone 6B that has 12, and that have a zone 7A, also 12. But that's not actually what we're looking for. I don't care that it's in both of these. I only care that it's at least in one of these, right? Because if we're thinking about the, if we're thinking about the application, we're thinking, I just want to know that one of my zones has one of these plants in my current month. I don't care if it has all of them. I just care that any of them work, right? So there's no any operator, but there is... Where's, where is my RoboMongo? There isn't an any character, but there is an or character, an or selector. So instead of passing these as individual conditions, we're going to pass an or and pass these both, actually as an array, we're going to pass both of these as conditions to the or operator, like this. <clears throat> and apparently I'm missing a colon. One second. Right, so now that we have an array, we actually, the, each of these need to be um, object conditions, right? Because this is, this is the wrong syntax. You can't just have these sitting here like nothing. So we need an array of objects that we're going to be oring through. So these are objects now. And now we run that, we get, we get the results we're looking for, right? Because it's saying, I want the image to exist, and I want either of these two cases to be true. I want zone 6B to contain 12, our month December, and I want zone 7A, or I want zone 7A to become 12. Now, of course, you could achieve the same result the other way by saying and, in which case it's going to give us no results like it did before, okay? But this is what we're looking for. Now, now you might be asking, well, okay, these are strings, though. If I, if I wanted to do this in one query, how do I get these as strings? Well, there's two ways to kind of think about this. One is... Um, you probably want to do this in your scripting language in two different queries. You probably want to get 6b and 7a first and form this object and then pass it in in a second query, right? Because Mongo isn't, isn't like MySQL. We're not going to be writing a stored procedure. We're not going to be writing a stored function. You could, and I'm going to show you that in a second, but you could do this in your scripting language as well. So if we pop over to my code here that I have that's actually running the site, you can see we've got run, one query here that's saying climate, and we're saying climate find one state, and, and then we've got given climate.zones. So this is our climate.zones is our 7, 7a and 6b from earlier. And then we're running a map function, so for each of those zones, so if zone equals 7a right now, we're going to form that object, zones.7a equals 12, and we're going to return it. And so zones becomes this object here. Then in the next query, we're going to say image exists true, and then we're going to pass that into the or, right? So we're doing this in a couple steps here. Now, we could condense this down if we really wanted to. Instead of doing this in two steps, let's form this object in a function right in Mongo. Okay, so let's get rid of the array. And instead, we're going to pass in an array of our, of our answers. So 7a, I think it was 6b and 7a right here, right? And then we're going to say dot map, and that's going to be a function, because Mongo accepts JavaScript, and we're going to say zone, and we're going to close that off. 
Now, what are we going to return? Well, we're going to return something extremely similar to what we were wor working on. So, var obs, we have to start off with an empty object because you can't dynamically set keys. So, the only way to set keys as strings, we need to set the object ahead of time. So, we need to say object, and now we're going to set the keys zones dot, and then we're going to add in our zone, right? And that's going to be equal to our month, in this case, 12. And then we're going to return this object. Same script we did over in Node, we're just going to do here. And this is going to return an object that's going to look identical to the one we need. So if I run this, you can see, same result, it still works. And I can even take this over to Chrome and run this in the, in the console, and you can see the result is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, now let's take this one step further and get these two answers and pass it in. So, we're going to run a, f a second query up here and say var zones equals db dot climate dot find one, and we're going to pass in that state colon md from earlier, right? <clears throat> and that's going to be our zones, and out of zones, we need the zones part. So actually, let's, let's just take a look at this first. So I'm going to kill that. So here's our zones. If I do dot zones from earlier, you can see we're given 6b and 7a. So we're gonna, that's exactly what we're looking for. So var zones equals setting a variable. Now we're going to pass zones into or right here instead. Now we're going to run that, and there we go. We've now written still two queries, but one Mongo run, I guess. I don't know what you call it, of kind of what we're looking for here. So we're able to form that array and pass it into an or. We're able to run the zones to get our climate for Maryland, and the only thing you'd have to pass into this would be the state. So if we run this for California, you can see there's a lot more things you can plant in California than Maryland right now. But if we go back to Maryland and we say, well, let's do May, when everything can be planted, you can see we've got a crap ton of things you can plant in May. Right? So you can see this working, working on the data, and this is just a little bit of how you form some complex queries with MongoDB.